In this Sailing Doodles, we dive off the back of the boat for the first time, and then I finally give you a tour of the brand new high field dinghy. I'm Bobby, and it's our patrons that make this channel possible. Thank you so much. Visit patreon.com slash sailing doodles. In the previous video, we continued to explore St. Thomas, having a great time on the beach, and we finally got some wakeboarding in behind the new high field. All right, we're prepping the dinghy to hoist her up on the crane for the first time. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, I mean, the crane says 1,500 pounds, so it's only a couple, I mean, that's 700 pounds tops, so uh, we should be good, I hope. And I've got to see if I got the balance right on the little hoisting ring. The high field was a little stern heavy on our first attempt, so we lowered it back in the water and adjusted the sling so we could get more of an even lift. We had to uh, move it to adjust it to get it centered coming up. Hopefully this time it works. This time it came up evenly, although that much weight off center of the boat really made the boat heel over to port. All right, it is five miles to uh, Buck Island, and we've really been babying these engines lately uh, just because we've been towing a dinghy and stuff. So we're gonna put the coals to it today and warm these engines up. Y'all ready to do this? At 1800 RPMs, we were doing about 15 knots. Made it to Buck Island. Uh, well, there's some small mooring balls that are right by the rocks. I think they're more for just dive boats. But luckily, there's a catamaran that's getting off their mooring right now, so we're gonna take it. Technically, this was part of the national park, so there was no anchoring allowed. We had to catch a mooring. Ready for the shipwreck. <laughs> yeah, this will be our first time diving off this boat, so cool. see how it goes. You look good in a tuxedo there, Sam. This is a formal dive at Buck Island. Right, yeah. <laughs> Don't force me out of bed in your society. Don't push me down the road you been down. Don't try to fix my head. Below us was the wreck of the Cortanza Senora, a World War II freighter. Rumor has it that the crew was tipped off that they were about to be boarded by the Coast Guard and scuttled the ship while they took off with their illicit cargo. In 1979, the ship was raised and hauled to Buck Island and then resunk, where it's become a nice wildlife refuge. Because the island is about five miles off the mainland of St. Thomas, the water is very clear. It's a very freeing feeling to dive off the back of your own boat. Alright, successful dive, saw a few fun things. Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. Well, that was pretty good for a first dive off the boat, no problem. Yeah. So Sell now, some eels. Yeah, eels. Lobster. 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 So uh, let's go for a hike now up to the lighthouse. Yeah. Good. So that over there, I was here last time I was here. A little tombstone. So that little tombstone over there is somebody brought their dog out and buried him here. Fruit. Oh, look, Bobby. Cactus fruit. Check it out. What is that? This is cactus fruit. Look, you can pull oh, wow. it out and you eat it. It's good. Is it good? Yeah. Here, try one. Get a fresh one. There you go. I'm not gonna die. You're not gonna die. You might die. Here. Oh, they're pretty too. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. You want a cactus fruit, sir? No, thank you. <laughs> These also are called dildo cactuses. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to use one of those. It's so weird how they come out. I know. Did you like the taste of it, Bobby? Yeah, it was good. That's beautiful. That yeah, is beautiful.
This is what cruising's all about, exploring islands that are only accessible by boat. She's trying it again. Yeah, buddy, buddy, buddy. That's a big hole. Yeah, it's deep. Yeah. We got some shy tarantulas. Either that or we're doing it wrong. <laughs> this one looks kind of fresh. Oh, that one here. Oh, oh, come here, buddy. All right, fun little hike. So now we're gonna head back to the boat and she's got some cactus fruit. So we're gonna have cactus margaritas before we send Sam to work. Yeah, we gotta get Sam over to St. John so he can uh, get to work. Work sucks, man, come on. <laughs> work sucks. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, we're ready to get off the mooring. Crew is ready. It was only about 30 minutes over to Keneal Bay on St. John. Uh, relaxing night here uh, near Keneal Bay, St. John. Got to go back over to St. Thomas though, we need parts. So we're going to go back up over there, get parts, put fuel in that aft generator uh, uh, tank now since it should be all dried out, ready to go. Hopefully, we'll see. And also because I'd like to balance the boat because the problem is, is that that aft generator's fuel is middle of the boat, starboard, whereas the water tank is port. And so we're just healing this way all the time because that starboard tank is just empty. So I'd like to get us back to even keel. So get fuel. And this is crispy. You ready to go? I'm ready. A lot easier getting off a mooring than a anchor, huh? So much easier. At 10 knots, it was a straight shot over to Red Hook on the east end of St. Thomas. Really calm day out here today, and it's only a three and a half mile run. So. We're gonna get fuel first, and then to dock. I don't know what side we're pulling up on the dock, so we'll yeah. need starboard fitters first, and then who knows. <laughs> Almost there. Jeez. After topping off our generator fuel tank, it was a quick hop over to the other dock for our slip. me out <laughs> so much <laughs> it is a little stressful we're getting better at it though we are we are but the main thing is it's got if it gets any momentum when you're backing in that's the problem is like if you sit there and you lapse concentration for like two seconds and you realize you're moving back at three or four knots yeah that's when it can get you and then the lines like having them ready in yeah. the spots that you need them to oh yeah under pressure <laughs> but we're well, good you you did your job. <laughs> all right let's uh get some shore power and clean this thing up all right guys, it is time to give you a tour of the new dinghy. I've said it many times, but your dinghy is your car when getting around the islands. It's really nice to have something capable of taking you anywhere you want to go. She is a high field 360, which means 3.6 meters, which is just under 12 feet. I think it's like 1110. Fully loaded with fuel and everything. She's close to 700 pounds, so quite heavy. But I mean, it's a large dinghy with a 40 horse Tahatsu motor on there. This thing will go really fast. So far, we've had it up to about almost 30 knots or a little over 30 knots. So this thing will move pretty quick. And um, we've been able to um, pull a, a wake border behind it. So there'll be lots of fun stuff in the future. You know, we got tubes and wake boards and uh, wing foils and all that. So looking forward to that. But uh, so I'll kind of give you some of the features of the boat. We'll start at the back and move forward. It's got a Tuhatsu 40 horsepower with hydraulic steering and uh, electronic tilt. So it'll tilt up and down um, with the controller on the throttle. I mean, really, it's, it's a really nice big motor and gets us going pretty quick. Uh, by the way, this boat uh, we came from Suncoast Inflatable. So thank you, Brad the owner of Suncoast Inflatables for setting this up. He really made it happen quickly from the time I got it uh, 
ordered and, and uh, he shipped it within two weeks because you know they had to put all this together. It come, you know they had to put it all together and has our team do it, and so it's really nice. So one of the nice things about high fields is that they're aluminum hulls, right? That are powder coated. A lot of dinghies are fiberglass, and so then in order to get your lifting uh, points and your hoists and uh, you know stuff like that, they just drill holes through the fiberglass and put D rings. I've had one of those D rings rip out of the fiberglass before. With this though, it's aluminum hulled, and so the mounting points are all welded in there. So they're a lot stronger. They're not going to rip out, and you can really trust them a lot more. And actually, aluminum dinghies are slightly lighter than the fiberglass because they have to use so much fiberglass to make them strong enough. And then whereas you know the, they just use I'm not sure how thick the holes are on the on the aluminum, but they're a lot lighter than and it, well, I mean, you know, 10% lighter or more than the equivalent fiberglass dinghy. The boat does have an automatic bilge pump, so there's no bailing for this. When it rains or you get water in there, it just comes back, automatic float switch, boom, pumps it out, which is really nice. Like if you don't want that to be running, like you're gonna be, if it's gonna be stored for a long period of time without using it, it's got a battery switch that you can turn off so that uh, it's not monitoring that. So moving slightly forward, we have, uh, it's the option to put in uh, this ski pole. So the motor goes down quite a bit and there's plenty of room to uh, put like a tow here for a line for, for wakeboarding. We've already done it, it's been it's a lot of fun so far uh, it really worked well and having you know somebody sitting up on the front and driving here it really doesn't pitch up too much I've got a planing fin on order I think it's just a good idea to put a planing fin on most dinghies especially if you're just if you're gonna hit sit two people in the back it really helps so speaking of the seating it's got these great seats they're be beautifully stitched and I mean really comfortable to sit in and I really like it and then underneath this seat is lots of storage. There's the battery box and spare parts or, uh, you know, like uh, the oars and stuff like that. It's really, really a comfortable ride on this boat. This is the console for the high field and it's really cool. There's space enough to put a little chart plotter. So I got a Garmin chart plotter right here and that is synced into the motor and the fuel and all that. So I can put the gauges on here to, it'll tell me, you know, the depth I'm in because I've got a depth meter on here as well. And it's, it'll tell me what RPM the motor's doing, the fuel level, and all that. So it's really cool being able to have that on here. And of course, it'll do charts too. So it's really nice. Now you got start and stop right there, uh, steering wheel. And then you've got your little, uh, I don't know what you call it, but options panel where you can turn on your navigation lights, your mooring or, uh, mooring light. So it has a separate little mooring light that you put on. It's, you know, you put it at night, you put it up so you have a light on the back. It's even got uh, courtesy lights, so it's really cool. I'll show you during the nighttime sometime. It's got these LED lights that uh, light up the floor so that you can see getting in and all that. And it's got options for aux one and two. Aux two right now is set up for the Garmin and I'm going to put aux one, I've got ordered, I'm going to pick it up tomorrow, a fusion sound system. So I'll put the uh, little fusion controller right here. It's a little, uh, it's, the fusion's a brand of uh, marine stereos. And then I'll install two speakers in there, so it'll be really cool having nice sound on this. Driving a dinghy that has a steering wheel, it's way better than using the tiller. I really enjoy it. All right, and next to the console, you have this another little seat with uh, storage underneath. Uh, this lifts up. Got you know my little harness down here for lifting and all that. Also, I'll be doing uh, putting the speakers probably in here facing out. This part of the console is fiberglass, so be able to like cut a little hole in it to put the speakers. So it is pretty nice. And then you have like a, a 12 volt there and USB outlets if you need to charge something too. And moving forward, uh, you know, you can sit on the side of the tubes. You have a seat here, and it's got this squared off nose. It's a, it's kind of a design difference from the other ones, which are a little more pointy. And I think um, the bow rake is a little more vertical. It does better like in open ocean, I believe, is what I've experienced so far is kind of pushing the wake away. So you get less spray because the spray goes out sideways instead of coming up over you. Especially if you're going fast enough, you don't really get as much spray as you would on a traditional dinghy. Uh, under here is the... Uh, Fuel tank, it's a aluminum fuel tank. It's not like a, like a store-bought one, so they made it just for this thing. So you get like, I think it's nine gallons of fuel in here, which is pretty nice. It's actually a fill is really easy because the fill is just right here. You know, you open this up and you pour your gas right in there. Um, it's pretty nice. One feature I like on this boat is it has these pop-up cleats so that, you know, when you actually need them, you can have cleats on anywhere of the boat. It's pretty nice. And then when you don't need them, you can fold them away. That way it saves your toes. You're not getting jabbed. And then I mentioned earlier, you know, having the D-rings welded in. So this is welded aluminum. And it's really great because the D-ring's not gonna lift out. And you got one on each side there and then one in the middle. We just have a painter line for uh, just general tying up, stuff like that. And then when we're gonna tow it, I hook uh, two, uh, I, have, I have like a little, uh, bridle setup that I made and hook those into here. And for security, just because, you know, you don't want your dinghy to get stolen. And you know, it's kind of a valuable dinghy, so I don't want to do that. So I've got this uh, 
It's just steel cabling. This is a 15 foot long one. I have one that's also 30 feet if I need to tie it up somewhere longer. And then I've just got it on this bar. I know it's not foolproof. Like I know it can still be stolen or whatever, but at least now they got to try a little harder. Hopefully we never have to worry about that. So there you go. It is the uh, brand new Highfield 360 Sport model. Uh, I think they came out with that model last year and really happy to have this. I mean, I've always said that, you know, your, your dinghy is your car down here. And, you know, if you have a car that'll get you up to 30 miles an hour or 30 knots, I mean, you can go a long way. You know what I mean? You can explore more and have more fun. You can pull a ski or, you know, whatever. So really excited to have that. Yeah, fun little boat. And uh, so thank you guys to Highfield for helping set this up and also uh, for Suncoast Inflatables there in Southern Florida. Check them out. And that's Brad. Thanks so much, guys.